Hello, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to be making a cheese crusted burrito. Three perfect words there. Each one making the last one so much more than it was before. You may know me from this other show called Worth It, where I and my associates, Adam and Steven, go around eating different foods at different price points. Making that show, I've also developed an interest into learning the fundamentals of why something tastes good. I think one of the best ways to look into that is to make some of these recipes for myself and see what is going on inside the recipe. So in our burrito episode, we ate at a place called Low Key, which makes the cheese crusted breakfast burrito. Its excellence is self-evident, right? It's the cheese, it's right there on the outside. But cheese is really what I'm interested in today. And in particular, how does the flavor of cheese change at different temperatures? So to start off, I'm gonna be speaking with Matt from Loki Burritos to learn more about how he achieves the cheese crust. Hey Matt. How's it going? Thanks for speaking with me. Pretty good, how are you doing, Andrew? So we're here to talk about the cheese crusted burrito. It's obvious what its components are, but it still makes you stop and think, holy crap, this burrito has a cheese crust. People always question it, or even when they come up to the stand, they still are like, I don't understand what it is. It's definitely something yeah. that's uh, a little out there. I was always surprised how reasonable it is. Do you think it's gonna be like this heavy monstrosity thing? But it really isn't that. So the cheese crust, you know, at least on our burritos are meant to be something crispy, something to kind of give you uh, some sort of texture on the outside. I like to eat like chips when I eat burritos just because most of the time the you know, insides need some sort of help with the texture. I really use it for textural purposes and just the toasted cheese is really good. Kind of like Cheez-Its, you know, and it gets rid of a lot of the oil. It's not just about the spectacle of having, oh my God, this is a lot of cheese but it's really about getting the flavor of like the caramelized cheese. And like, is that what is more important? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. Unless you're getting the special, which, you know, I want you to be full with that one. I want you to be like, man, I'm so full and I can't eat anymore. Regular burritos, um, I want you to be you know, just comfortable. But it's an off menu thing for us now. It's called the cheese blanket. You know, the burrito is sideways and we roll it sideways versus vertical. I think it's when you're really wanting to be like, okay, I want to seal this whole thing with cheese and I want to take a nap after this. And that's something you would do like to the burgerito. Wait, can you just uh, explain what the burgerito is one more time? It's a smash burger minus the buns. And we add that to our base burrito. I like it because, you know, you're kind of looking for that burgers and fries brunchy feel. That that sounds awesome. Matt, thanks so much for sharing the recipe with me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to making this. Yeah, definitely. Nice talking with you, Andrew. Thanks for having me. Okay, it's the next day. I've acquired my ingredients. I've also acquired my main cooking device, this cast iron stovetop griddle. Because I'm gonna need a lot more surface area if I'm gonna be able to fold over the full length of a burrito. And with its weight and thickness, I'll be able to recreate the flat top cooking experience that Matt has. So I also took care of some of the prep work. Since I'm doing this at home, I decided to just make each component the way it would make most sense for me here. For example, I made my bacon in the oven. I think I just get a better consistent result. Back in the Worth It video, Matt was making hash browns on the flat top. He's since updated to fried potatoes. So I've made crispy oven roasted potatoes, but I also use the residual bacon fat from making my bacon. That's also kind of the flavor experience you would get if you were eating his burrito, you know. We also have some sauteed vegetables, which are bell pepper and onion. And I also made his salsa, which is tomato, serrano, onion, some vinegar, and that kind of thing. The next most important part of the burrito is the tortilla, of course. Matt insisted that your generic store-bought tortilla isn't gonna cut it in this situation. I actually found a local tortilla maker. Here are my tortillas. These have such a satisfying sort of slack heft to them. It's like both heavy, but limp. And it's very, mm. it's just such a dreamy consistency, you know? Tortilla is so satisfying. Next, let's talk about cheese. So we're actually dealing with two cheeses in this burrito. So on the inside of the burrito, we have Monterey Jack, which Matt explains is for 
its creamy texture. But for the crust, he uses a cheddar and Monterey Jack shredded blend. What have you noticed about different types of cheeses for making the crust? Do some work better than others? We use Cheddar Jack, depending on the brand. Some of them brown faster. I was told that is the higher sugar content. When we use other cheeses like the Mexican blend one, we've used as an emergency because we run out of cheese. It's just not good. Like it looks like the cheese crust and it may feel like the cheese crust, but it just has no flavor. It's just kind of there. I didn't realize that Cheddar Jack was not a whole other cheese is actually a combination of cheddar and Monterey Jack, but they're sometimes marbled together. This is like very creamy, tastes like American cheese. Cheddar has a much sharper dairy tang to it. Something I just learned on Google. Cheddar is cheddared to become cheddar. So cheddar is actually a process, a cheddaring process. So before we actually make the burrito, I think we should do a little melt test. With me trying this out at home, what should I be looking out for? You want the pan like extremely hot and you put the cheese on there that it starts to sizzle and you know fry itself. I like to call it painting where we you know kind of scrape the grease from the cheese using one of the spatulas. I like to make sure again that it's crispy, not greasy. Taking that first bite, you know, you get a crisp instead of a soft. So my tool of choice is going to be the offset spatula. Let's start off with just the Monterey Jack. It's quite uh, gooey. You can see it's like immediately a liquid mess. Let me see if I can... Okay, interesting. It immediately has that baked cheese smell. Just eating a slice of cheese. It's amazing how much more flavor Overall, just kind of like milk taste to it. You know what I mean? Round two, combination cheddar jack. I was worried about this cast iron being an unseasoned surface, resulting in some sticking, but so much fat comes out of the cheese immediately that it's really not an issue at all. Already, it seems to have a lot more structural integrity. Mmm. So where the Monterey Jack had basically no flavor at room temperature, and it was transformed by being cooked, this is now intensified in the same way. So out of curiosity, I have to have some blue cheese in my fridge, and I just wonder, is this applicable to all cheeses? Maybe it'll be horrible, maybe not. Oh wow, it's uh, essentially just turned into a puddle, actually. This is effectively turned into nothing. <laughs> Where did the cheese go? Pretty, uh, pretty not great. There's still a little bit of that blue cheese sourness, but a lot of it has gone away. The remaining toasted dairy taste is quite similar to the other toasted cheeses. I have a mess to clean up, and then I think we should try making a burrito. So this requires a little bit of juggling since I'm at my small stove here. So all I'm doing here is reheating ingredients and scrambling eggs. So I'm swapping to a different pan, which I'm just going to use to warm my tortilla to make it a little more pliable, okay? So inside goes Monterey Jack, then our scrambled eggs and other warmed ingredients, then some avocado slices. Some of this salsa, and now I fold it. Not the best job I've ever seen, but I've tried making a lot of burritos at home and I always screw it up. Now I think it's just because I've been using terrible tortillas up until this point. But this will suffice for attempting the cheese crust. I'm just trying to make sure that the flames are even because my burners are different sizes and I need to use basically the full expanse of this thing. I'm seeing just some wisps of smoke coming off. Let's go for it. He's doing a very trippy dance right now. So I'm just trying to spread some of the grease out like, oh, like Matt advised. Oh, geez. Okay, screw it, I'm doing it. 
I don't think I made this big enough and simultaneously I think there's too much cheese. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Uh-oh. Here is my burrito attempt. I was so nervous and it was over so quickly. Look at the way this cheese is on here like this. Look, I can just hold it by the tortilla. Look at how rigid this cheese is. Oh my God. Looking at it through the sunlight is even better. It just looks like a golden crunchy pillow. It even has the pillowcase seams to it. Did I make food or did I make something that I can never destroy? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm going to eat this now. It is so good. The flavor of toasted cheese is super unique though. I mean, you don't really encounter it in a lot of normal dishes or it's like the corner of a lasagna, you know, like the edge nachos that have it. But to have a thing that is entirely wrapped in that sensation, pretty great. And really it's the texture. I mean, so while it is this crazy sounding and crazy looking thing, it does serve a distinct flavor purpose that you really can't replicate otherwise. I'm blown away by how pretty simply it came together. So I achieved a cheese crust, but I don't think I did as good a job as they do at low key. I mean, really it's about the cheese balance. You dial in the components so that it's still in balance and everything tastes good and you're not destroyed by the end of a burrito. And really that's the expertise that you're getting with Matt. So if you'd like a truly excellently made cheese crusted burrito, please visit Matt and Loki. Their stuff is terrific.